How you doing? It's kind of slow, so I thought I'd read some scripture. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are, Lord. I thank you for your amazing grace. I thank you for Jesus, the cross, life with the feeling of the Holy Spirit being being your fullness. I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, as we read your word, I ask for understanding and wisdom and knowledge through your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're just, uh, you're always there for me. My teacher, my comforter, my helper. And I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for everything he did that allowed us to be reconciled with God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So James 4, 6, 7, 8. I'll read those. In James 6, I encourage you to read all the New Testament. Uh, just chapter 4. So read chapter 4 over and over and over until it gets to your heart. Until it cuts to your heart. Until it stays in your heart. You see, in Christ, we understand that we think with our hearts not our minds. Yes, the, the Holy Spirit will bring the scriptures to your remembrance, and, and, uh, but the word cuts to the heart, stays in the heart. Mm -hmm. Most people don't realize that we think with our hearts. So if your heart is on God, if your heart's always hunger for God, then uh, you're in a good place. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know, a good way to understand humility is to study the Beatitudes. When Jesus was on the mountain, he began with the Beatitudes. He was basically telling you who he was, his character. He was blessing you with the attributes of himself. So study that. Study everything Jesus did and, and walk in his character. Be humble. Like Jesus. Number seven, it says, you notice how after that it says, but God, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud. So he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And then it says in seven, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And then... Resist the devil, and then he will flee from you. So when you're under spiritual attack, which you all be under a spiritual attack when you're in Christ, because the devil hates Christ. The devil hates. He tries to stop us from doing the will of God. You know, when you pick up the cross and follow Jesus, you, you come to a place now where the, where the devil notices you. And now he wants you bound up. So you can't do God's will. So you can't bear fruit. So you can't stay connected to the vine. So you can't prepare yourself as a bride for the coming of the bridegroom. So what do you do? It says right there. It says simple. It says, get rid of pride. Basically, God opposes the proud. So get rid of pride, but, give, but gives grace to the humble. So get rid of the pride and be humble. And then submit yourselves to God. Submit. That means fully surrendered. That means no more living for yourself, but living for God. That means dying to yourself and living for God. And then when you do that, you're able to resist the devil. Because you're no longer yourselves. The Holy Spirit teaches you that you don't want to sin. To, to hunger and thirst for righteousness is to hate sin. The Spirit, Holy Spirit hates sin. So, submit fully, and then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When you're on fire for Jesus, you burn demons up. You burn demons up that reside in you, that hang on you, that jump on you. You burn them up. The more you glorify God in your walk, you burn them up. They hate it. They can't stand it. <clears throat> and then it says, after that, after talking about resisting, humbling, and get, uh, get rid of the proud, Get rid of the pride, you know. Uh, resisting the devil, he'll flee from you. Then it says, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. 
So, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So cleanse your hands. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Turn away from sin. Holy Spirit will help you. Turn away. You got to want it. Stop thinking about what, what what's, it's about you and start thinking it's about Jesus. Jesus gave all himself to you on that cross. So give all yourself to him. Quit holding back. Quit trying to hang on to your old life. Die already. <laughs> and live for Christ. Purify your hearts. Amen? Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, he gives you a new heart. A new heart. You double-minded. Double-minded. Okay, what do you, what's double-minded? Well, let's think about this for a second. Double-minded in the, in the scriptures. It, you know, you're, you're trying to think about your life. You're, you're trying to take on the flesh mind. And then, and then you're trying to have a little bit of the spirit mind. You can't. You can't have two minds. It's either all or nothing for Jesus. You know, you can't live for the world. It's all or nothing for Jesus. So get rid of your fleshly mind and take on the mind of Christ. Amen? Don't be double-minded. God loves you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. For God shows his love for us in that while we were sinners, still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. All are sinners, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. As it is written, none is righteous, not, not one. No, not one. Romans 3, 10. God's remedy for sin for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. John 1, 12. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he may, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. All may be saved now. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. Knock. Knock. Let Jesus in. That's Romans, um, that's Revelation 3.20. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. So, if you're ready for Jesus, you're tired of being in your old ways, your old fleshly life, living for the world, living for yourself, say this quick little prayer. My decision to receive Christ as my Savior, confessing to God that I am a sinner, and believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross. I was raised for my, for my justification. I do now receive and confess him as my personal savior. Lord Jesus, I love you. I need you. I've been trying to live my life without you. I can't do it, Lord. I realize now that you're the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to heaven. I, I submit to you and surrender to you, Lord. I make you my Lord over everything I do. I ask you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Give me your Holy Spirit. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Help me to be an overcomer. Help me to cast out devils, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers, to heal the sick. Holy Spirit, fill me up now. Out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you said that, I know I might have said it quick, but if you said that, there's a party in heaven for you. Now seek a good Bible-based church, a, a church to function in the full gospel. 
But most importantly, be the church because you're now a temple of the, of the living God. Be the church. You're going to experience so much wonderful things in Christ. The best thing that you can do is, is, is surrender and be obedient to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and study the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. But know that we were saved by grace and we are to live a life pleasing to God. And that's speaking to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. You come to God through Jesus Christ, and that's the only mediator. Jesus is the only mediator between you and God. I love you, and God bless you, and congratulations, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You're royalty. Ephesians 2.10 says that you were created for good works. You're a masterpiece. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.